Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB foundation level sample paper discussions where we are talking about tips, tricks and time management related to this particular certification. As a part of this particular tutorial, we are getting started with the chapter 4 of the set B and looking at some of the very critical and complex questions However, very interesting and uh, yet important in terms of talking about what could be the level of hard questions in the examination. And some of them are right here. Let's get started. The very first question here we are talking about is question number 22. And this has been picked up from the decision table and uh, certainly one of its kind. So let's have a look what exactly they're asking you. Uh, the following decision table contains the rules for determining the risk of atherosclerosis okay whatever the medical term i'm not from medical so certainly that's a little difficult to pronounce but yeah atherosclerosis and uh, you, you design the test cases uh, with the following test input data and input data has been uh, provided with the table and right there there are some test cases created on the left and uh, the question is what is the decision table coverage achieved by these test cases Right. First of all, uh, let's understand the table here uh, because many of you I know will certainly comment down that uh, the symbols are incorrect, you're reading them wrong. No, they're absolutely right. Rule 1, uh, cholesterol is uh, less than or equal to 124. Blood pressure is less than or equal to 140. Rule 2, less than or equal to 124. Again, cholesterol and uh, blood pressure is greater than 140. That's how you read these symbols. And then rule three is 125 to 200 as cholesterol. And then blood pressure is less than or equal to 140. And then again, rule four is going with uh, 125 to 200. And the blood pressure is going to be uh, greater than 140. So if you notice uh, something in pattern here that uh, the cholesterol is being uh, tried with the same value with different blood pressures here. Okay. And the last one is greater than or equal to 201 is the rule 5 and there's no blood pressure considered there and the outputs are very different the risk level is very low in the rule 1 then low in rule 2 rule 3 is medium rule 4 is high and rule 5 is very high so the first and foremost thing is if you can understand the data provided to you in the table half of your problem is already solved right and then all you have to do is pick up the test cases put it back into the table in order to conclude that what exactly is the ask here if you see the options are talking about the percentage coverage so you will have five test cases in simple like five rules are here now question is my test cases are also five but certainly i have to check whether these five test cases are covering all the five rules or they are just covering some of them that's the most important part we have to measure so let's start applying these test cases back into the table to quickly judge that what percentage coverage has been achieved here if i pick up the very first test case the test case one basically talks about uh, the cholesterol here and the cholesterol of course is given to me as uh, that is uh, what is it oh sorry uh, so yeah cholesterol is 125 and blood pressure is 141 if i look at this particular test case that certainly uh, is going with different rule and if you see test one is particularly falling into the rule four because rule four is something which is saying 125 to 200 and this is clearly saying that cholesterol is 125 and the blood pressure is 141 so uh, of course uh, that's one thing that is going to the rule 4 because rule 4 the blood pressure is greater than 140 because uh, the test case is 141 so goes to rule 4 and test case 2 as well if you see it says uh, uh, cholesterol is 200 of course it's in the rule 3 and rule 4 but then it says blood pressure is 201 and 201 is greater than 140 so that also goes to rule 4 so that means test case 1 and test case 2 both belong to rule 4 itself so one thing is sure that given that out of 5 2 are belonging to 1 so maximum it can be 80 percent not more than that so let's continue further and if i see the test case 3 test case 3 says uh, rule 124 sorry cholesterol 124 and uh, blood pressure 201 and this goes to rule 2 because in rule 2 the cholesterol is less than or equal to 124 and uh, the uh, blood pressure is 201 which is of course greater than 140 so rule 2 and test case 4 also if you see 109 which is less than or equal to 124 
and the blood pressure is 200 which is greater than 140. So again test case 3 and test case 4 both belongs to rule 2. So again they got into the same particular test like the same particular condition being measured. So if I just look at the last one that is test case 5 it says uh, cholesterol is 201 and blood pressure is 140. So of course uh, greater than or equal to 201 is getting covered in the rule 5 and for blood pressure it does not matter it's hyphen there so certainly that has nothing to worry about but test case 5 goes to rule 5. Now if I quickly check this out of uh, the 5 partitions we have covered only 3 sorry not the partitions of course the 3 different conditions combination or three, 5 different rules which we are talking about out of these 5 rules only 3 are covered that is the rule 4 rule 2 and rule 5 which certainly brings to a conclusion that 3 divided by 5 multiplied by 100 gives me a very straightforward answer that is 60 percent right so i think that it basically gives you the right answer already so put together the right answer for this particular question is b 60 percent just because we have covered three rules out of five rules given here and three on five is going to give me 60 percent coverage on these different rules of this decision table. So again, the point is, this is not complicated until we make it complicated. The most important thing is if you really understand and read the operators carefully, and I'm still sure even after explaining, I would have some comments stating that now that's a wrong symbol, but don't do that, okay? What I'm saying is mathematically proven because if you write X in front of that operator, you can understand what exactly you read it as, right? So say for example, if I'm taking any of one of the values and I say that uh, we are talking about say uh, greater than 140, then put X before that greater than symbol, then X is greater than 140 is what we say. Okay, so cool. Let's move on to the next one. And uh, the next uh, one we are talking about is next question that is question number 23. And as a part of the question number 23, we are taking an example from uh, 23, that is uh, the uh, state transition testing. And again, this is uh, one of its kind, so yeah, let's be extra cautious with that. It says uh, a storage system can store up to three elements. So that's the first line which is telling you what is the total uh, which can be uh, stored at any point of time and is modeled by the following state transition diagram. The variable n here represents the number of currently stored elements. Which of the following test, case, test cases represented as sequence of events uh, achieves the highest level of valid transition coverage. So number one, we need to uh, certainly understand the diagram because there are some equations written here, but don't worry, that's not something complicated. We just need to have a little patience to conclude on that and we can do it very simply. So let's go to the diagram and if I look at the diagram here, if you see there's something called as the transition name is add and then there is a you know, formula provided to you that n is equal to one and then if you see n is equal to n plus one, and below you have remove, you have n greater than zero, n is equal to n minus one. So if you, what exactly they're trying to say here is that like in the first point that is a start, uh, you add a particular uh, element and uh, that's where the n is equal to one. That means every single add will add one particular item to the state, uh, to the next particular state. And until unless it is not full, it will continue adding thing, okay? It will continue adding there's a loop if you see there is uh, add n less than 22 so let's add the uh, so make it a little simple okay little let's let's make it a little simple and i'm going to give you them a little name like t1 t2 t3 t4 t5 and if i just have to compare this uh, now with the straight understanding so t1 is a transition which will add t2 will continue adding till it is n plus one which is going to be three if you see the question already says that uh, a maximum is three element which can be stored and t3 is a transition which is removing and minus one uh, till it is greater than zero okay and then uh, again if you see t4 is adding further to check for full that if it is already three then it can stop and then remove is again if it is full it will start removing things from there uh, to come back to not full right so transitions directions matter how exactly things are being done matters and based on that, we are going to check for this, that what exactly could be the right answer. So, first of all, I think uh, the transition part is very clear what exactly is happening. And uh, we have given a betterment that is by annotating it with some uh, test representation like T1, T2, T3, 
T4 and you can check for the flow now. It will be easy rather than dealing with execution. So execution is just a representation but not exactly uh, needed to solve the question, right? So making it easier is always an easy step to do that. Now let's go back to the solution. So if I see the test one here, the test one says add, remove, add, add, add. So if I say uh, add, uh, that is can be written as T1, T3, T3, T2, T4. Okay, so it covers four out of five because it's not hitting the e, T5, which is the remove part. Okay, because add, remove, add, add, add. So that goes to full because at this point, it uh, becomes 80% uh, coverage, but of course gets full uh, by doing add three, three times back to back, which brings it to the full uh, capacity of this particular container. If I take the test B, uh, first of all, it is infeasible because uh, there are four ads here and by doing three different iterations of add, it automatically becomes full because the very first line is clearly saying that uh, it can store up to three elements. So maximum number of add could be three in a sequence until unless we remove one from there. So B, if you look at, it says add, 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 add. Okay, that means four times, which is of course infeasible uh, as a part of this particular scenario because only maximum limit is three. Then if I go to option C, it says uh, add, add, add. So that means it becomes full. Then you go with remove, remove. Of course, uh, you can remove until unless it is greater than zero. That means one. So this looks uh, pretty much feasible enough and also covers five out of five transition and giving us the 100% coverage on this particular scenario. On the other hand, if I look at option D, it says add, 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 remove, add. In this case, we are covering T1, T2, T4, uh, uh, T5 and T4 again, but T3 is not getting covered, okay? Because that's going with the uh, N minus one further. So only one remove is getting covered from the full because three adds makes the container full. And uh, from there, you're just doing the remove, which is N minus one, right? That is T5. And then T3 is not covered. So four out of five, 80% coverage. So the one which covers the maximum is of course, the uh, option C, which is add, 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 remove, remove. So. I think that also concludes with the right answer. So put together, the right answer for this particular question is C, that is add, 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 remove, remove, makes it to the right answer for this particular question. However, you know, we, by looking at some questions, we may feel that this is very complex and uh, we make it complicated. Do not forget something very important. It's us who make something complicated. If you just have a little patience, try to make it simplified in your own way, just like how you are, I used T1, T2, T3, T4, T5 to make it simple. You can also do it and simplify a situation, right? So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.